Hey, this is Ryan from WebEminence.com, and I'm here to show you how to use PayPal buttons on your website. It's probably the easiest way to get started taking payments on your website, and it's great for people who are just selling a couple products. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So I'm here on a demo WordPress website, and I created this simple page to show you how to add a PayPal button to your site. This is an example of if I were to sell T-shirts and I just put a picture up, with some basic description text of how a product page might look. And then I wanna put a PayPal button right here so people can order the product. And you will need to have a PayPal Premier or business account to accept payments using PayPal buttons. So if you have a personal account, you'll just need to upgrade to a business or Premier account. So when you log into PayPal, you're gonna land on a screen like this. And usually what you're gonna to need to find is the tools menu. So if I click on tools, this page may change in the future, but usually you're going to look for merchant services or something like that. But right now it says PayPal buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and click on PayPal buttons. It's going to show me this video and I'm going to go ahead and click create a button. That's going to take me to this page where I actually can start creating the button. So let me just quickly go through some of the different options they give you on this screen. They have a shopping cart that allows your website visitors to add different products to the cart and then change quantities and view the total. Uh, this is good for people who are selling several different products on their website. They have a buy now button, which is what most people will use, which is great for just selling one or two products on your site. They have donations, gift certificates that track the gift certificate process for you. So you can give out gift certificates and then people can redeem them through PayPal. You can do subscriptions, which is monthly billing. Automatic billing, which requires an upgrade on your account. And then installment plans, which I've never used before, but must just be allowing people to pay in installments rather than all at once. So let's just go through here as if I was selling t-shirts. So I'm just going to say item name is t-shirts. You can use an item ID just to identify the product. That's optional. I'm going to make the price $10, uh, 10 US dollars. You can set different currencies here. Here you can customize the button. I'm going to add a drop down menu. And the name of this drop down menu is going to be color so that people can choose from three different color t shirts. So I'm going to do red, white, and blue. And you can set different prices for different options. I'm going to make them all 10. Click done. And then on the right, you'll be able to preview what your, what your button will look like. I'm going to go back and set this to a buy now button rather than the cart button. You can add another drop down menu if you'd like. You can add a text field if you want people to type in just one line of text like maybe if they were going to put their name on the shirt. You can add that there. Then you can customize the appearance and text on the button. So I can use a smaller button. I can display credit card logos or take them off. You can change the language and change the button text from buy now to pay now. You can also use your own button image that you uh, create or download from somewhere else. You can add a tax rate manually or you can use saved values from your PayPal profile and this allows you to set different tax rates for different geographical areas like states or countries. I'm just going to leave it on saved values for now. This section allows you to choose to use your primary email address or your merchant account ID. And the most secure thing to do is just use your merchant account ID here. So just leave it set to this top option. The next section is optional. It's step two. You can track inventory, profit, and loss. Uh, the first box is probably good to have checked because it'll save your button in your PayPal account. So you can go back and edit it later. I'll show you how to do that after we create the button. You can also track inventory if you want to keep track of stock, like if you have 10 shirts and you want to get an email alert when your stock is low, you can use this here. You can also track profits and losses, which I won't show you here. And then step three has some advanced features that you may want to use. Like do you want to let your customer change order quantities or have your customer add special instructions and a message to you? You can put yes or no and you could change the prompt that's given in the special instructions box. You can enter whether or not you need a customer shipping address, like if it's a digital product and you're emailing it to someone, 
you'd probably just want to mark no because you won't need a shipping address. And then here you can set the um, URL when people cancel their checkout or finish their checkout. So it'll automatically send people to that page when they cancel or finish their checkout. So you might have a thank you page on your site where you send people after they complete their checkout. And then there's some space down here for advanced variables that you may use for different things. Most people who are creating simple buttons for the first time won't be using this, but you can read more about that using these links. So once you're all done, you can click Create Button, and they're gonna give you instructions for adding the button to your page, but basically what you need to do is copy all this code and paste it onto your website where you want your button to go. So you can click Select Code to select all of the code, and then right click and click Copy or press Control C or Command C on a Mac. And I'm gonna go back to my WordPress site and regardless of where you're building your site, you can just add the code into the HTML of your page. In WordPress, you would click on the text tab and just enter the code where you want it to go. So I'm gonna put it right under my product description and click update. Now if I go to my live site and click refresh or press F5, I can scroll down and you'll see the PayPal button is now down here. You'd obviously have to do some formatting if you wanted to you know, keep it up here so you can use HTML to do some alignment. I may do another video on that. So here you see the color option. People can select red, white, or blue, and then they click buy now, and it's gonna actually take them to a secure site at paypal.com to make their payment. So you can customize some of these options. You can add a logo or change your name up here. That's basically gonna be your business name on your PayPal account. Here's the order summary for your customer and they'll see the uh, product description, price, and the quantity and options they selected. Here's a shipping and handling of $3 and the total. So then people can choose to either pay with their PayPal account and if they wanted to do that, they would just log in here and then they can pay with their PayPal balance or any of their payment options within their PayPal account if they don't have a PayPal account, they can just click pay with a debit or credit card. And that option will allow them to just type in their credit card information and then process the payment right here. So a lot of people don't want to use PayPal because they think that people will need a PayPal account to make the purchase. The important thing to keep in mind is that most people who purchase things online have a PayPal account and are used to using PayPal. And if they don't have a PayPal account, they can still check out with a credit card. So that's how the payment would work, and then after the payment is done, uh, people will be directed back to your site depending on the settings you set in your button. If you wanted to make changes to your PayPal button after it was on your site, you'd go back into your PayPal account and go back to the buttons page by clicking Tools, PayPal Buttons, Create a Button, and then click on Go to My Saved Buttons. And that's going to show you a list of all the buttons you've created, here you'll see the t-shirts button. I'm gonna click on action drop down menu and click on edit button. And most of the things on here will require you to repaste the code after you make the changes. So I already added a yellow option for $10. And I'm gonna change the shipping to $5 and click save. And you'll see the drop down still says red, white, blue, because I'll need to repaste the code to add the yellow option. But the shipping probably was updated already. So if I click buy now, you'll see the shipping and handling says $5. So some things will be updated automatically in the code, but some elements of the button will need to be repasted in the code. So if I go back and grab the generated code, you'll see the yellow option is within the code. So I'm gonna select it again, hit copy, control C, and go back to my page editor and just repaste the button code over the old button code. I'm gonna update the page and then refresh the live page. And now you should see the yellow option in the drop down menu. So that's how easy it is to add PayPal buttons to your website. If you already have a PayPal account, all you have to do is upgrade to Business or Premiere, and you can start creating these buttons and putting them on your site. 
So when people make payments using a PayPal button on your site, the money's going to go into your PayPal account and then you can connect a bank account to your PayPal account to transfer the money from your PayPal balance to your bank account. So I hope that helps you start selling on your website. If you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment below and I'll answer it as quick as I can. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the future videos and we'll see you on the next one.